sequence is um, part of the five Buddha families, which will mean nothing to you, but it works through. That's nice. <laughs> It works through. Uh, let me join in. <laughs> um, um, it works through the um, five energies that you'll find both in Indian yoga. This happens to be a Tibetan sequence, um, so very definitely in there. And um, so we're going to just warm up in each of the um, energies and then work through them one by one. So it's slightly different. There's some slightly different um, um, Tibetan practices, which are very Tibetan, but you will recognize um, a lot of them. So just start by coming up to be on the mat and just lift and roll your shoulders. And we're going to start by moving our neck. So if you imagine your nose like a um, pencil and just start by using figure of eight. So making a horizontal figure of eight with your nose. So you're moving your neck. So as you go to the top of your eight, your horizontal eight, you breathe in. And as you go to the bottom, you breathe out and come to the other side. So how big or how small your eight is, is really um, up to you. And it doesn't matter if you get muddled or you even go to a vertical eight. It's the fact that you're moving your neck. And you're opening the connection to your upper energy level in your head. So your thought process is being, in a way, rejuvenated because you're pressing the pause button. You can't focus while you're head is moving and you're moving very slightly out of your normal operating mind wave into more towards a, a slowing down of the brain waves. You're balancing your left and your right hemisphere. You can carry on doing this or if you want to change direction you can change your eight direction and go in the opposite direction and just notice how that feels. And then very gently come to the center. And just then lift your chin slightly up. And breathing out, lower your chin towards your chest. So you're moving your head still, but in a slightly different direction. Chin up slightly as you breathe in, as little as much as you would like. And breathing out, lower your chin to your chest. So you're moving your head still and your neck, but you're moving it in a slightly different way. And if you want to know which energy we're moving on, this is something called Udana energy, which um, operates upwards. It comes through your voice and travels on up through to the head. So your upward upper energy needs to be balanced for your um, brain function. And then slightly unusually cut the center and just either with your hands and fists, just massage along your jawline. Your jaw carries a lot of tension a massage along the jawline can release quite a lot of tension. So I'm curling my fist in, but you could also use the pads of your fingers, but curling your fists in the backs of your fingers is quite good as well. And then just drop your hands. When we come to rolling our shoulders, so just lifting and rolling the shoulders back. Lifting and rolling the shoulders back. And lifting and rolling the shoulders back. 
And then roll the shoulders forward a couple of times. Inhaling as the shoulders lift up, rolling forward and down as you breathe out. Coordinating the movement that you're making with your breath. Slowing everything down. Beginning to slow your nervous system, calm it down. And just finish by lifting and rolling your shoulders back to set your shoulders. And we now move on to the next energy level, the prana. And this theory is called prana vayu. And so here, you rotate your wrists two times, and then breathing out either through your nose or through your mouth, you go. Feel your abdomen coming towards your spine. So perhaps we'll stick with the audible ha. Rotate your hands again. This is called mandala of war. And you'll notice that your tummy or abdominal muscles tighten slightly again. And this is set in your center. This is your core. And one more time. And then just bring your one fist of your right hand to your left palm. You're pushing your fist into your left palm and your left arm is resisting this. And you'll feel this reflected in your upper chest muscles as you sit up. So it's strengthening your upper area. And then just release your hands. Just circle your wrists in one direction and the other. And then make a fist with your other left hand to go into your right hand and just push. Feel that resistance. And then just release and shake your hands out. And then just place your um, fingers on top of your shoulders. And this is called crow's, crow's flight. So as you breathe in, you lift your arms as little as much as you would like, and then breathing out, you lower your crow's wings. Inhaling, lifting, how much is up to you. And breathing out, lowering your hands or your um, elbows. Inhaling, lifting your elbows. And then breathing out, lowering. And one last time as you breathe in, lifting and breathing out, lowering. And drop your hands to your lap. Open your arms out to the side. They can be bent at the elbows. And then come to hug yourself. Bend forward. This is stretching the mid upper back. And just very gently rock from side to side. Chin is in. You're activating your vagus nerve, which is calming your system down and you're opening that central back area. So remember which hands on top as you sit up and gently open your arms again. They can still be bent at the elbows and embrace, hug yourself the other way. Come forward and just once more, move from side to side. Just enjoy the stretch in the center of the um, Upper back, center of the back, the more you tuck your chin in, the more back of your neck is elongated. And then release. And then we come to the next energy, which is mana energy, which operates from the navel from side to side. So just resting your hands on your knees, breathe in and sit up just to lengthen your spine. And then breathe out. I'm going to bring my left hand to my right knee, but whichever side works for you is good. My right hand just presses down slightly behind me. I want to breathe in as a woman, and then just the head is the last thing to turn. As you breathe in, it will lengthen your spine. And breathing out, you turn. And 
you make sure your shoulders are away from your ears. Easy to let them ride up. And then come back gently to the center. Place your hands back on your knees again as you sit up and just nod forward as a nod to compensating. Only a nod. Sit up again. Abdomen slightly engaged, which means coming in slightly. And then turn to the other side. I'm turning to my left side. My right hand is down below, behind me. As I breathe in, I lengthen and breathe out. I turn. Breathing in, I lengthen and breathing out, I turn. My head's a glass of turn. And you'll feel this twist centrally at the navel area. So it's activating your digestive system, activating your enzymes, your, um, your acne, your fire, your digestive fire. And then come back to the center. And just very, very slightly come forward with your hands, compensating a little bit more this time through your forward movement. And then sitting up. And just we'll do 10 rounds of beginner's Kapabhati, which is just then a knot of the fat that we need to look and it's detoxifying. So imagine that lines on the end of each finger and just blow. So you can audibly just blow your thumb, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth again, the other hand. And then lower your hands. Hold your knees, and um, this time, this is Uddiyana Banda. So again, we're focused on the navel. Breathe in, breathe out with an audible ha. Ah. Feel your tummy go in, and hold the breath out. Tummy's in, perineum engages, chin down. When you feel you want to breathe, release the hold. Inhale and sit up again. And then when you're ready, breathe out again with an audible ha. Tummy with the abdomen in and get early in engaged with chin to chest. Hold the breath out. When you're ready, breathe in and sit up. And then do the third one in your own time, breathing out with your heart. Holding the breath. And then when you're ready. So we move on to the warm up for the next energy, which is the Apana energy. And this is very um, typically Tibetan and very odd. You simply tense your perineum and release. Hello, Patsy. Tense your perineum and release. Tense your perineum and release. It's setting up a, um, a, a, a movement, a peristalsis um, in the digestive tract and tone. Tense your perineum and release. And tense your perineum and release. It's setting up a wave through internally. And then, you might be glad to know as we move to the next energy, which is Diana, that we're actually coming to um, roll over onto our hands and knees and coming into a cat position. So this is the Diana movement. And we'll just start by rocking the baby, which is just rocking your hips very, very gently from side to side. Beginning to wake up the lower abdominal energy. And you can wake it up a little bit more by coming to the center and dipping your back, looking either up or along the mat, and breathing out, rounding your chin comes to your chest. And inhaling, dipping your back. 
looking to where is appropriate for you. And then rounding your chin comes to your chest. And then inhaling, dipping your back. And rounding the chin to chest. And now it's a freestyle, either rocking from side to side. You might want to make circles going one way on the other. You might want to make a figure of eight with your bottom. It's a totally freestyle movement. You can move your hands. You're just waking up your lower back, your lower abdomen. You can keep to cat cow. Just feel your fluid in your lower abdominal area. And now we come to um, summarize all five energy movements. We come to the center. Tuck your toes. Bring your bottom back towards your heels. You might want to bring your hands a little bit towards you. Abdomen comes in towards the spine. You lift one knee and then the other, coming into a very soft dog. Walk the dog by bending one knee and extending, and then the other knee and extending. If this is too much for anybody, just come back to the cat. And then very, very gently, having walk the dog, you might extend both feet towards the ground. They don't have to touch the ground. And now bend your knees and walk your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. And really take your time to come into a soft forward fold, forward bend by bending your knees. And then gently press Feet into the ground, come gently up vertebra by vertebra. You can use your hands to trace up your body and come to standing. Tadasana, morning Joe. Lift and roll your shoulders. And just take a moment to explore your balance. Just slightly sway from side to side. And then I think more difficult, slightly explore coming forward and then slightly explore coming back, just to work out where your balance is. And once more, lift to roll your shoulders and come towards the top of your mat as we look at some very gentle sweep to the sums. Inhaling. And then exhaling, bringing your hands towards the center of your chest. Note as you bring your thumbs inwards towards your chest, how this lengthens your body. Your feet tend to press into the ground, and your entire body lengthens at the front of the back. Your elbows are out slightly. Inhale, drop your hands, and then lift them up. Look up only if this is good for your neck. And extend your thumbs or two of the little fingers away from you. Breathing out, bend your knees as much as you need to as you roll down, vertebra by vertebra, and place the hands on the ground by the side of your feet. Step or slide your right foot back. And just enjoy for a moment a lunge, a forward lunge, feeling that your right hip is opening out. Abdomen in slightly as you slide your left foot back. Inhaling, dipping your back. And exhaling, bending your back. And just inhaling. Either dip your back again in cat, or you can come to a very slight up dip. Either way, we'll come back to cat. And now, as we round our back, the hands can come slightly closer to you. Tuck your toes and come into a very soft downward dog, your inversion. Feel that you can space your feet further apart and that you can really bend your knees. By bending your knees, you can lengthen along your spine, you can make almost the head 
but all the way along to your tailbone. And then you can try straightening your leg. You don't have to go totally straight. And then just bend one knee and then the other knee. So as if you're walking the dog and you can feel the extension along the spine. Abdomen in to protect you as you then kneel back down to the ground. And hands now move to the left. This gives you space for your right foot to come up. Your hands and go either side of your right foot. And once more, really take your time to feel the stretch in your hip. And you might want to go back slightly and stretch your leg out the other way so that your heel um, is extending and your toes go up towards the ceiling. Feel the stretch now along the back of the leg. Come back to neutral. Feel that you can adjust your hands or your feet however you want to. Again, your abdomen comes as you tap your back left toe under. Lift your back knee and step or slide your left foot towards your right. You can take a couple of steps up. Hands go on your shins as you inhale. Press your hands on your shins and feel the length from your tailbone to the top of the head. Breathing out, bend in, bend your elbows and bend your arm. Breathing in, press your hands once more against your shins to feel the length along the spine. Stay here as you breathe out. And as you next breathe in, soften your knees, press your feet into the ground and roll up right to the vertebra of standing. And inhaling, either looking head or up to those open hands and breathing out, lower your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders. Bring your hands to your chest in prayer position. Inhaling, stretch your hands up. Look up if it only this is good for you. Breathing out, bend your elbows, bend your knees and roll down. Placing your hands on the ground. Step or slide your left foot back, left knee goes on the ground. You can untuck your left back toe or keep them bent. Just explore the stretch in your right hip, just coming forward slightly with your right knee. Your hands are supporting your weight, so you can go over your 90 degree angle depending on your hip capability. And then come back to neutral. Slide your right foot back. You're in cat. Feel you can adjust your knees wider. Your hands are shoulder width apart and you are pressing down with your thumb and second finger so that you're securing your pose. Inhaling, dipping your back. Looking up or along the mat according to how this feels comfortable and then breathing out, rounding, chin comes to the chest. And inhaling, dipping your back. And rounding chin to chest. And you can do that again, or you can come forward slightly into an up dog, knees on the ground, looking ahead or up. And we'll meet back in cat. Tuck the toes. And come to bring your bottom away from your hands as you then lift up one leg at a time into a downward dog, one knee at a time. Your knees are bent and then begin to straighten them, aiming the heels to the ground and feel that you can open your feet wider, bend your knees and straighten them. And then bend your knees and straighten them. And you can walk the dog. Feel that you can sway your hips in a circle again from side to side. Feel the stretch along the back of your legs. Still have attention here that your tummy or your abdominal muscles are slightly engaging with that 10% of your capacity supporting your whole posture. And then bend both knees as you come back to leaving. Your hands now go to the right. Note as you come down and touch your toes, you're opening your lung meridians completely. 
you can now flatten your toes if you want to. And your left foot comes up to but the front hands go either side of your left foot. Just enjoy stretching slightly forward. You can come back, extending your uh, toes up to the ceiling if you want to. Feel a stretch on the back of the left leg. And then come back to a neutral position. Tummy or abdomen in, tapping your right toes. Lift up your right knee and step your right foot to your left foot. Hands go on the shins, inhaling, press your hands in, lengthening along the spine, and your tailbone to the top of the head, breathing out, bending, bending knees, elbows out. Inhale, pressing your hands on the shins, lengthening. Stay here as you breathe out. And as you next inhale, soften your knees, press your feet into the ground, and you might actually use your hands to roll you up, but I don't know about standing. Lifting all your shoulders and inhaling, raising your arms up, either looking ahead or looking up. You can stretch your fingers for greater effect and then lower your hands and lifting your open shoulders. Inhale, exhale, hands together, hands at the heart in prayer. Feel the lift of the chest. The diaphragm is um, getting the space that it Knees. Inhale, arms up, either looking ahead or looking upwards. Breathing out, lower, vertebra by vertebra as you roll up and down. And then step or slide your right foot back, right knee on the ground. Back toes can be flat or tucked. Feel a stretch in your hip. Perhaps come back, extending your left foot. Leg your left toes up, all optional. And then come back to neutral and slide your left foot back, your in flat. Feel if you can adjust your knees and adjust your hands under your shoulders, pressing down with your thumb, your second finger, inhaling, dipping your back, breathing out, rounding, kept. Cow. Inhaling, dipping your back. And then round, chin to chest. You can either dip your back again and round or come to an upward dog. And then we move back up again. Cat, bring the bottom slightly towards your heels, like your hands might move towards you as you then come into a soft rounded dog. Walk the dog. Bend the knees and straighten them. Bend the knees. And when I say straighten, the knees keep the knees soft. And then both knees come back down to the ground. The hands go to the right, giving space for your left foot and your left hip to come up. Hands on the side. Tucking the right toes, tummy in, and then looking at the back right foot, stepping your right foot to your left. Hands on the shins, inhaling, lengthening on your spine, breathing out, bending in, inhaling, lengthening on the spine, and stay here as you exhale, and then inhale, soften your you roll up vertebra by vertebra. Lifting up and lowering. And then hands once more to the chest. Inhale, exhale, and raise your hands. Round down. Left leg goes back, left knee on the ground. Right knee goes back, lifting your back, rounding chin to chest, tucking your toes, just speeding up this little bit, downward dog. Feel still that you've got time and space to move your feet apart, soften and straighten your legs. 
softening and straining. And you can walk the dog. Tummy or abdomen still comes in and secures your down dog position and allows you to bring your bottom back further away from your hands, taking weight out of your wrists. And then lowering your knees, bend them back down to the ground. And this time, we reversed our legs coming up, as we did last time. Hands to the left, your right foot comes up, hands either side of your right foot, tucking your abdomen or tummy in slightly. And then tucking the back toes, lifting up the back left knee, stepping your left foot towards your right, hands on your shins, inhaling, lengthening along your spine, breathing out, bending your knees, arms out to the side, inhaling, pressing your hands onto your shins, you lengthen. Stay here if you breathe out. And inhaling, bend your knees, press your feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra. Standing. And last time in the series, raise your arms up, look at your thumbs or look ahead and breathing out, lower your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders. We're going to come into um, a warrior one. So come back on your mat a little bit and step your um, right foot forward a little bit. Your right foot can come out to the edge of the mat for balance. And your left foot is, uh, well, classically about a 45 degree angle out, but just be comfortable. So inhaling, soften your right leg, your right knee, and raise your arms to where you're comfortable. It can be here, it can be right up. You could look ahead or you could look up. And breathing out, lower your arms and straighten your leg. You can even rest your hands on your waist if you want to, opening under the shoulders as you breathe in and soften your, soften your front leg and then come back. And then take whichever version works for you. As you breathe in, raise your arms, soften your front leg, looking up or looking ahead. And then lower your arms. Abdomen comes in as you come forward. I think you're going to demonstrate this beautifully um, into warrior three. I have to have my hands either side of my front foot, and then I might lift my back leg up and extend my heel. But Nikki has much greater balance than me and is doing it beautifully. So take whatever version you would like. And when you've Really, you're really strengthening your standing right leg. Soften your knees when you're ready and come back to warrior one. You might like to angle your front foot slightly inwards and put the weight onto your back foot and use your hands to walk up your front leg to steady your balance. And lifting and lowering your shoulders and stepping your front foot back or standing however it works for you and then stepping forward with your left foot had to think there um, again for balance your left foot can go slightly out towards the edge of the mat and your right foot slightly out at an angle to secure you and breathing in soften your front knee Take whichever variation of warrior suits you, looking ahead or looking up. Breathing out, lowering your arms. If you want to know what warriors do, they are brilliant for osteoporosis, but if we're not thinking about that, they're very good for uplifting. They're a warrior pose. And that suggests that it's preparing you for battle, but today's battle is against disease, lowering your arms. You're strengthening your core. You're in your center, inhaling. Lifting up. So mission for courage. And yeah, courage, well done, yeah. Grounding, earthing, courage. And then tummy or abdomen in, coming forward, either to, I'm going to have my hands, um, my hands outside of my feet and lifting my back leg. But Nikki, you, again, you're going to very ably demonstrate a beautiful warrior three. 
extending my heel and almost extending my big um, toe. And then when you're ready, soften your front knee, bring your back foot back. I like to angle my big toe, my big foot in, putting the weight on my back leg, and then you can use your hand to walk up vertebra by vertebra. Lift and roll your shoulders and then step your leg back. And then just come to sway from side to side. That was um, the apana grounding energy. The apana energy works at the lower part of the body. It's your elimination energy, but it's very strengthening and grounding. People who think too much are in their heads too much. So you will do that to ground someone's energy. And you would also do that if somebody's had a tendency for epilepsy where they're in their heads fusing out too much. You need a grounding, earthing energy. Um, and then we now move to the dhyana energy. So again, Nikki's going to be able to demonstrate this much better than me. Um, so I don't mind which foot it is, but I get terribly muddled, but one foot over the other. I'm sure it's going to be eagle pose, so whether in fact you want to lift your foot off, but I've lost my balance totally. But even crossing your limbs crosses the wires of your mind. So I need to keep my foot on the ground. Nikki's great, she's balancing fantastically. And then have your arms over um, as well. But um, as you lift your elbows, you can look between the diamond. You'll note that this is stretching out your back, but the very um, act of crossing your arms or crossing your limbs, whether you balance or not, balance better, but whether you balance or not, you're still inviting your left and right brain uh, hemispheres to coordinate. And then just unravel everything and once more go from side to side. I find it helps if you're going into a balance on one leg to unweight the leg you're not about to use. And in that way, your brain kind of thinks, I don't need it. Okay, so, it's a little trick. <laughs> I, I, it's not my strong point, but that does mean I'm going to be up. So do just look at Nikki, don't look at me. And then when you're ready, um, bring your left um, foot over, whichever foot you use, I don't mind. Um, cross your left foot over. I'm keeping my feet firmly on the ground. I'm lifting my heel, but my feet are cheating me on the ground. And then my other, I have to think about this, my other arms cross over. If you lift your elbows up, there's a little diamond and you can look between that. But strangely enough, the brain doesn't question, the brain still um, computes that you've crossed over your limbs. So you're inviting your left and your right brain hemispheres to co coordinate. And if you've got a beautiful balance like Nikki, um, you're, she's, she's much more successful doing it even more than me. So that's great. And you're opening up between your shoulder blades as well. And then when you're ready, just unravel and come out of that. Just once more, sway from side to side. And then come to, we're going to come to warrior two. So I'm going to step out comfortably with my feet in a triangle. I'm going to turn my right foot out and my left foot slightly in. And if you could draw an imaginary line uh, from your front heel towards your back inner arch, should be a straight line and your body should mimic that line. So if you've, it's almost like a sail. Um, it's like, I'm not necessarily um, doing this, but your hands are out. If that's too much, you can put your hands on your waist. I'm softening my front knee and I'm looking over my front right hand. My back hand can be on my waist again if that's too heavy. And just releasing that, inhaling, raise your arm, look up to your thumb and breathing out. Come to a side angle pose, a token side angle. And Nikki, I'm sure, demonstrating much more. I'm bending the front knee. I'm bending the front knee. And inhaling. Thank you, Nikki. Coming back to warrior. And lower your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders. Come to have your feet parallel. 
and then turn your right foot in, your left foot goes out. You can always move your front left foot wider to give you greater balance. That's always an option. And the other option is to slightly, depending on how your fit hips are configured, to angle your front foot slightly in. But that will only suit people with an internal rotation. And then hands out when you're ready, or hands on your waist, depending on how you're feeling. Soften your front knee and look either beyond your third finger or look towards that direction. Again, this is grounding. It's warrior two or virabhadrasana two. And then just release as you straighten your front leg, looking up towards your thumb, your left thumb. That releases the focus of your eyes and disconnects your eyes from the stress centers of your brain. So you hard to think of things when you're looking upwards. And then soften your front leg as you come to either side angle, which Nick is going to do, or I can modify side angle. I can have my hands on my waist, which allows you to open your inner shoulder better. It's up to you. And then tummy in as you come up. And just now bring your big toes to inwards, your heels slightly out. Really bend your knees. You can slide your hands down your legs and come to either holding your shins or if you reach it, just place your hands on the floor. Your elbows, if you are down there, come inwards. You're just resting and relaxing into a forward bend post those warrior poses. And you can shift your weight from side to side, bending one knee and straightening it and then the other. And then to bring your feet together, we do something you might be familiar with, heel toe. So your heels come in, your toes go out, your toes come in, your heels go out. Heels in, toes out. It just gives you a gentle control. Then soften when you're Peter, Peter at hip width apart, soften your knees, roll up. Hands, you're still slightly bent, hands at the heart center. You might want to bring your feet in a little bit more because we're going to just turn to one side. If this is too much for you, just put your hand on your waist and hold your thigh as I'm doing and then come to the centre, and then Nikki's going to do the main one, but we'll come to the other side, but I'm just going to show you. I'm holding my thigh here, and my hand is on my waist. It's just a slight rotation the other way, but it's not such hard work. And then soften your knees. Come up to standing. Just raise your hands, thumbs together, and just stretch from side to side. And then lower your hands to your heart centre and come gracefully, however that suits you, to um, a sitting position. Now this is a twist, but it's a king of the fishes. But if you feel that you're getting in a pretzel, then just have one um, leg out. So if you have one leg out, you just Let's start with both of our legs out. You just bounce your knees, bounce your, bounce your legs. Just extend your heels and point your toes a couple of times. Extend your heels and point your toes. And one more time, extending your heels and pointing your toes. And then just circle your ankles a couple of times in one direction. And then circle your ankles a couple of times in the other direction. Stretch your toes out, not giving yourself cramp, and either release, or if you can curl your toes in, do. Be very careful not to give yourself cramp, stretching out and curling in. So lift up your left leg and bring your left foot over your right. That might be enough for you. Um, I'm going to ask Nikki to demonstrate the fishes, which is just bringing up the other leg, um, but I'll stay with my leg out. 
just hold your left um, knee or under the knee to lift yourself up, your spine is straight. I'm now going to bring my left hand behind me, still breathing in, straightening, tummy in, and as I bring that, I'm turning towards my left knee, so I'm turning towards the left. You can stay like this, or if you want to bring your elbow hand up and bring your elbow over, it's a much stronger rotation. Put your hands up, you can just hold your knee as well. And breathe here a couple of times. Now this is a rotation, but you'll feel this higher up than the ones that we did previously. It's um, almost behind the heart level. And then come back. Just hold your knee and nod forward. And then sitting up. Pick your left knee off, up and just straighten your legs once more on the ground and just bounce your um, legs. Just a very odd thing to do, but it vibrates energy throughout the body. Just bang your big, your, your bunions, your big, basically your big toes <laughs> bang together. Bang your bunions. Bang your bunions. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly elegant, but anyway. And then, um, I think it's the right way, isn't it, that I bend. Just bend. Think, is it my left? I'm very confused now. <laughs> the bend your other one. No, it is my left. Is it? Um, I went that way. But anyway, bend the other knee, whichever one you want to, and then Nikki's going to demonstrate going right over. <laughs> and pretzeling. Just hug your knee in and sit in up and tummy in as you turn towards the inside of that knee. Inhaling, breathing as you lengthen your spine and breathing out as you turn. Breathing in, lengthening and breathing out as you turn. Any kind of rotations realigning with your spine come around out of that and then just plug forward. But it also gives your digestive system a sort of like a, a boost to your Agni, your digestive fire. And then sit up and come to cross your legs or sit in a comfortable position. And here we just take a very, very gentle breath work exercise. So bring your right thumb to your right nostril and just take a few breaths closing off your right nostril so you're only breathing through the left nostril it's a way of slowing the body down balancing everything at this point so that you get the maximum benefit from the yoga sequence so far and that the movement that we made absorbs into the, um, the body the body has a very little to recover you're breathing in and out through your left nostril to your yes your left nostril blocking your right And then lower your right hand and bring your left hand blocking your left nostril. So now you're only breathing through your right side. And it's your right everything, your right brain, uh, the right side of your body, uh, looks at the liver, um, the gallbladder. So those are all your, I'm sure Nikki will tell me, it's the wood elements, isn't it? It's the liver and the gallbladder, the chi rising, the sap rising as the spring comes. And then just lower the hand. And we now come to some prana um, Bible, the prana, the prana that we associate with yoga, pranayama, but this is prana, it's one of the energies. And it runs along the hand. So once more, 
just rotate your wrist in one direction as a nod to the diamond fist, and then rotate your wrists in the other direction. And just flip your hands, fingers out, and curl them in, and flip them out, and curl them in. Once more, flip your fingers out, and curl them in. Then just shake your hands out. So, um, yoga is not classified as a martial arts, but it does run along those lines. The, it is very much your core, and the enemy was said disease. So um, there is a um, that there is an element of that in yoga, and this again um, um, kind of underlines that. So this is the bow. Imagine you've got a bow, and you're pulling your bow back with your right hand. Your elbow is high, and you're just um, taking aim. It's opening across one side. If that's too much for you to raise your um, elbow up, then just place your hand on the waist to open up, opening one side. And then release. Lift and roll your shoulder. And then pull your bow the other side. If that's too much, rock your elbow and place your hand on your waist. It's just a slightly different focus. You would actually focus as if you are literally looking in the distance. You would go back to release your arrow. And then just release. And then come to your uh, knees. We're still in prana by you. And come to child's pose. But there are so many variations of child's pose. Um, you can put your big toes together and your knees wide apart. You can um, have your hands stacked in fists so that you don't have to come quite so far down. You can have your hands folded so that you're down further. You can rest your forehead on the floor. You can rest your forehead on a cushion. You can have your uh, hands alongside so that you're opening your back like a people in accessing the energy. Um, in this current um, health crisis, I note that they put people on their fronts to allow them to breathe better into their backs. So again, yoga, you've got this breathing into your back, you're accessing your, your back of your body. There's space between the vertebra and um, your kidneys, you're going to bring your sitting on top, you're just accessing the part of the lungs at the back that you don't necessarily access. Coming forward like this is also part of the nervous system. So it is a forward bend. It brings blood to the head. And so it's very good if you have a one pack headache just to have a, a rest and forward movement. You can have the cushion be bolted with your hands as high as you want to so that you're not coming so far down. And also it's very restful for your heart. Because your heart, if you think about it, is not having to push and pump upwards. Animals, when they're running, their hearts are kind of parallel to the ground, so they have great efficiency in their movement because the heart's not having to work quite so hard. The back of your neck is having space for that Udana energy to come along your spine and up into the head. So coming forward like this is quite um, helpful for one's clarity as well as calm the nervous system. And your spine is almost as simply given space along the vertebra. And I think the same thing, is it you're exposing your gallbladder meridian running up the back of your body? Um, the blood and goes up the back of the blood. The blood and yeah. Okay. Yeah, correct. So that, again, that taps into the essence in your life, so your vitality. Yes. The benefit. And you, you do always like a total rejuvenator. Really. And, but well, gently and gradually come out of that. And then just coming onto your bottom. 
And we're going to take a very soft inversion. So that could be if you were um, legs up the wall, but um, I'm going to just place my hands, palms down, lie on the mat, my knees are upwards, my feet are hip width apart, and then press down my feet, lift my bottom, and just place the palms of my hands under my bottom. That gives a little shelf, and then release my bottom back onto the backs of my hands. It gives a little shelf for my bottom to relax and release on. Then I'm going to have my knees into my chest, and then I'm just going to gently extend my legs upwards. And just, if that doesn't suit you, take your hands out. It doesn't suit everybody. I like to angle my um, thumbs and finger in. But it just gives a bit of support. If you also rest your bottom on a cushion or a bolster, and you can just sway your legs gently from side to side. C, we just swaying. It's an inversion, it's very good for hormonal balance. Your endocrine glands run or correlate along the uh, spine, roughly. And then just slide your hands out from under your bottom and hug your knees into your chest. Just rocking from side to side just giving your lower back a massage or your upper sacral area a massage. And then supporting your legs underneath, um, at the thighs place one foot and then the other foot down on the ground. Feet hip width apart or even wider. Hands just rest on your abdomen. And once more, let your knees drift both of them in the same direction towards one side. Breathing in, your knees come back to the center, your hands just slide across your abdomen, and then both knees gently slide down to the other side. They can, your hips come off the ground, your knees can go as little as far down as you want them to go, coming back to the center. And you can involve your head in this. If your knees go to one direction, optionally, you can move your head away from your knees, but it's entirely up to you. It's a very gentle rotation, just winding the body down before we wind down. Your hands on your abdomen open out your under your arms. So this is part of your lymph, your upper lymph system, part of your immune system, giving space to your energetic pathways. Even if you don't have your lymph nodes, the energetic pathways are still there. And then just coming to the center, you can keep your knees bent or touching together in constructive rest, or you might like to just slide your legs along the ground and for a moment or two, just enjoy lying on the mat. At the end of this, if you don't want to come up, then you can just stay lying. That's entirely up to you, but just for a moment, bring your attention to the base of your spine and move downwards through your legs and out through your feet. And then just a little bit further up from your lower abdominal level, imagine the energy traveling from there all the way down through your hips and out through the legs and soles of your feet, that's your apana energy. And then the next energy level that we looked at was the mana energy, is to do uh, moves from side to side. The colors in this system are all different from the normal ones, so um, this color is green. And the samana energy very much focuses on your digestion. But the Chinese, of course, view digestion as the absolute basis of health. 
So your Samana energy is very much connected with your fire and your Agni energy because you absorb what your body breaks down in terms of food. So your inner fire needs to be quite strong for optimal health. And going from side to side, as we have done, moving some other energy is quite helpful in that. And then moving up again, your prana energy is um, all pervasive, of course, it's the chi or the prana, but from your chest and down your hands and arms, out from your heart. So we looked at that with the various movements that we did. And your yana energy goes everywhere, connecting through the joints. So we have actually looked at the joints, bending our knees, rotating our um, wrists and our ankles. Our elbows have moved, our shoulders, all the way along the spine. Even our toes have been stretched out, and our fingers have been stretched out. It's all of the other energy right the way up to the head. And then the Dhyana energy, uh, the um, Udhana energy, is the upward energy. It's the energy that rises upwards, gives our voice, our, our speaking our truth, and it goes up to the head. So your Udhana energy is very much implicated in, um, when it's not functioning, in um, people who uh, Ultimately, you know, they might develop one of the dementias. They call it um, in the Indian tradition you know, diseases of the upper head. So, any kind of breakdown of um, mind function. So, our balance of science, I really looked at that. Speaking is your, your dharma energy, and humming with your lips together activates vibration in your head, so that becomes more. Um, more uh, Pronounce Udana energy in your head. And just as you breathe in, imagine breathing in through your third eye and breathing out through your third eye. That's the dent in the center of your forehead between your eyebrows. Imagine breathing in and then breathing out through the third eye. Balancing our energies, part of our metabolic control. Breathing in and breathing out through the third eye. And now take a moment just to bring your attention to your feet and your legs. Just slightly tense them and then release, relax, and let go. Bring your attention to your hips, your bottom, slightly tense, and then focus on your arms and your hands. Just slightly tense, make fists, tense your arms, and just release and let go. Bring your attention to your chest and slightly lift up from the mat and then release and relax back down to the mat, let go. Consciously lift your shoulders up towards your ears and consciously release your shoulders away from your ears. And now just gently to let your head turn to one side. Bring your head back to the center and let your head move Gently to the other side. We reconnect the Udana energy once more from side to side. And then, if you are lying down, bring your knees into your chest once more, hugging your knees into your chest and just gently moving from side to side, rocking across the lower back. Walking across the upper sacral part of your body. 
letting the weight of your body rest on your lower back. Good. Good. And then either stay here, or if you want to come to a seated position, then you would roll, either sit up or roll to your right if that's available to you. But however, take your time to come up to a seated position, but do please stay lying and relaxing if that works for you. And Bringing your hands to your heart to take a bath for yourself today. Thank you very much. Namaste.